Good day. Some time ago, The Way International produced a series of books about the Aramaic or Syriac version of the New Testament. It was produced by a research team in 1988. There are several books included in this series. One of them is a three-volume interlinear Aramaic and English New Testament. There's also a concordance to the Peshitta version of the New Testament and a lexicon that is an English dictionary that translates the Syriac into English words. This is kind of handy in that in the interlinear it gives each of the Aramaic words a number like Strong's concordance does for Greek words and the number is linked to similar numbers in the lexicon. That way it's easy to identify different noun and verb forms and their meanings. There are three columns in the interlinear. The first column is the King James Version. The second column is what they call a word-by-word -word translation. The third column is the Syriac in the Estrangelo script. Beneath each word, like an interlinear is designed to be, is the English translation and the number of that particular Syriac word. So you can look it up in the lexicon. Also along with it is numbers that show the word order, which is handy because Syriac is written right to left while English is written left to right. So it's helpful for study the Syriac translation. Now this is said to be a Peshitta version. However, as the preface says, it's similar to the Peshitta version. There's a problem with having the Syriac New Testament in the Peshitta version. Now, the Peshitta version dates from the 5th century, 400 years after the New Testament was written. And it was especially promoted by the Nestorian version of the Syriac, Syrian Christian Church. The Nestorians did not believe that the books of 2 Peter, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation were canonical. So they left them out of the Peshitta. So the translators had to take Syriac from outside the Peshitta version and include it in this version. The old Syriac does date back to the first century when the New Testament was written. The Peshitta comes 400 years later and so is a different dialect. In that way, it's not really as useful, and it's actually a misnomer to call it an Aramaic interlinear version, because it actually is a Syriac version, not an Aramaic version. Now, you see this, however, in the title to the um, lexicon. The title to the Way's lexicon is Lexicon to the Syriac New Testament. So that's more, more accurate than using the word Aramaic. Now, what's surprising about this interlinear is that it contradicts the Way International, its producers, and the founder, Victor Paul Werwell, on a few points. For instance, Werwell said that the original language of the New Testament was not Greek, it was Aramaic. And so he thought the Peshitta was the original. The interlinear does not say that. Werwell also inferred that the oldest manuscripts of the New Testament were in the Peshitta Aramaic, not in the Greek. That also isn't something that the interlinear supports. The Aramaic actually differs from the way international in other ways as well. In fact, it's surprising that this interlinear often contradicts Werewolf and the way international. The International consistently supports the Greek text and the traditional Christian teaching about the nature of Christ Jesus, and it consistently contradicts Werwell and the Way International on that issue as well. The Way International and Werwell taught that Jesus is only a man, that he did not have a divine nature, and so they have to revise or retranslate certain New Testament verses in order to come to that conclusion. What you find is the interlinear contradicts Werwell and the Way's interpretations, and especially contradicts parts of his book, Jesus Christ is Not God. Let me give you some examples. John 1.18, Werwell says, should read, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. The interlinear, a word-by-word -word translation, says differently. It says, the only begotten God, that one is in the bosom of the Father, has declared him. 
John 3.13, where we'll said, you should delete the word which is in heaven. The interlinear includes it. It says, no man has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man, who is in heaven. Werewolf makes up some odd words for Thomas. He said, Thomas said, my godly Lord, which doesn't make any sense as far as a Greek translation. This is John 20, 28. But the interlinear translates it correctly. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Werewolf also wanted to delete words from Matthew 28, 19. Werewolf said to delete the words of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But the interlinear includes those words. The word-by-word -word translation says, Go therefore, teach all nations, and baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Werewolf we'll wanted to make Galatians 4, 6 say, God sent forth his Spirit. But the interlinear translates it correctly. God sent the Spirit of his Son. The interlinear also says in Acts twenty twenty eight, the church of God which he purchased which with his blood, which Werwell would oppose. So the interlinear consistently contradicts founder VP Werewolf and the Way International, and it consistently supports the Greek text and traditional Christian teaching that Jesus Christ has a divine nature as well as a human nature. The interlinear also contradicts the Wayne International on other topics. For instance, Werwolf taught that death cannot glorify God. And so the Way says, John 21, 19, you should delete the word death, but the interlinear includes it. The interlinear says that he might show by what death he should glorify God. The way also want to delete the word death from Philippians 3.10. But the earlier said, says, be conformed to his death. The interlinear also contradicts werewolf about the words for love. Now, Syriac only has two words for love. But werewolf specifically said that God revealed to the New Testament writers which of the four Greek words to use, the four words for love. So the interlinear shows how Werewolf contradicts himself and gives false interpretations of many Bible verses. However, there are places in which the interlinear tries to appease way leadership by intentionally introducing inaccuracies. Now, one of Werewolf's distinctives was he said that God could not forsake Christ on the cross. And so Matthew 27, 46 should say that God spared him, didn't forsake him. And so the inner linear gives in to leaders of the way by saying, my God, for what purpose have you spared me? But it contradicts itself in other books. The way's lexicon translates that word accurately as forsake or desert. And in the chapter before, that is Matthew 2556, it translates the same Syriac word accurately as forsake or desert. But it had to change the text in that one place to appease way leaders. The translators were stuck. Should they be accurate or should they reflect the teaching of Werewolf and the way? They were saddled with the belief in the way that Victor Werewolf alone taught truth rather than tradition, that he taught by revelation. They were saddled with that belief, uh, the kind of belief you'd find in a cultic structure. Charlene Edge, who was on that research team, an ex-member of the Way International who wrote the book Undertow, talked about that situation. She mentioned how the higher-ups, especially Walter Cummins, pressured them to change to introduce that inaccuracy into the text and that the research team had trouble reconciling what Werewolf taught with what was accurate. And she mentioned how researchers on their team and other teams were fired for showing evidence that contradicted Werewolf. Now there's a problem. Werewolf got his information often from other sources. Now, Werewolf had what the New Testament calls uh, itching ears. 
um, in Timothy, it says some have itching ears and they go off to false doctrine. And so Werewolf would grab any odd idea he could find and use it, teach it, without even thinking about the ramifications or evaluating it. And that's what he did with the Syriac text. He believed what George Lamsa had to tell him, that Aramaic was the original language of the New Testament. Now, George Lamsa then is a problem behind a problem. He wrote what's called the Lamsa Bible. A uh, more formal title for it is Holy Bible from the Ancient Eastern Text. Lamsa believed he was the only one who had accurate interpretations and translation of the Bible. And like Werewolf, he believed he was, had a corner on the truth. However, Lamsa's other books show how Lamsa's teachings do not match up with Christian teachings, nor do they even match up with the teachings of the way international. Lamsa was Nestorian, a certain sect of the Christian church, and so that's where this idea comes from that Peshitta Syriac is the original language of the New Testament. But he also believed metaphysical beliefs. That is, esoteric beliefs you find in the New Age movement or in Christian science. Lamsa did not believe there were any personal angels or demons. Instead, he thought the word spirit means uh, an influence. Lamsa didn't believe that people needed to have their sins atoned by Christ Jesus, just that they should understand the good. Lamsa didn't believe that Jesus physically rose from the dead or that he ascended into heaven. Instead, Lamsa thought, this was just a spiritual vision or a transformation in the hearts of the disciples, not an event. Likewise, he thought that the second coming would not be an event, but rather would be a spiritual transformation, a raising of consciousness among people in the world. So Lamsa wasn't a Christian by Christian standards, nor by the standards of the Way International. Now, the Syriac or Aramaic certainly was not the text of the New Testament. The New Testament was certainly written in Greek. And let me give you some good reasons for that. One of them is that Jews across the world in the first century knew Greek, but didn't know Aramaic or Syriac. Or rather, I'd say very few knew Aramaic or Syriac. Now, the city of Jerusalem was more Hebrew than any other city in the world. That's the place of the temple and the chief priests. And yet, so many Jews in Jerusalem itself spoke Greek, not Aramaic or Syriac. An example is Acts 6. The Hebrew-speaking widows, widows are in conflict with the Greek-speaking widows, both of them being Jews in the city of Jerusalem. After that event, Stephen preaches to the synagogue of the freedmen. Now, the synagogue of the freedmen were Greek-speaking Jews. We know that because of the Theodotus inscription. It was written by Theodotus, put on the wall of the synagogue in the Greek language so that the Jews who came to that Greek synagogue could read it. In addition, many people know that the Dead Sea Scrolls have Hebrew copies of Old Testament books. What few people know is that some of the Dead Sea Scrolls, written before the time of Christ, are Old Testament books in the Greek language because so many Jews did not know Hebrew or Aramaic. In addition, the most popular version of the Old Testament in the time of Jesus was not in Hebrew. It was the Greek translation of the Old Testament called the Septuagint, abbreviated as LXX. Jews on the whole spoke Greek, not Aramaic or Syriac. And so it makes sense to write the New Testament in Greek as well. Authors of the New Testament, like Luke and Paul, definitely knew Greek. We know that for sure. And the recipients of New Testament books also understood Greek, but not Aramaic or Syriac. Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Corinthians, Colossians, Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus, these were all people who lived in the Roman Empire thousands of miles, or at least hundreds of miles, from where Aramaic was spoken. They were Greek speakers. And so it made sense to write the books of the New Testament in language that the people would know, which was Greek at that time. John, the apostle, wrote 
the letters of John and the Gospel of John and the book of Revelation when he lived in Ephesus 30 years after the rebellion of the Jews in which half of the population of Israel had been wiped out in that rebellion. And so he wrote in the language that people at that time understood. A time in which the Romans had actually driven all the Jews out of Jerusalem and with it uh, most of the speakers of the Aramaic language as well. Jesus said he wanted his disciples to make disciples of all nations, that is, all Gentiles. And it makes no sense to write Gospels directed to convert them in a language none of them understood, namely Aramaic, but rather to write it in Greek so that all nations could read the Gospel of Christ Jesus and take it to heart and believe in him. Long before the Peshitta version was ever, ever produced, there were hundreds of copies of the New Testament in circulation. Even today, we have at least 43 copies of parts of the Greek New Testament that are older than the Peshitta. So the Peshitta is produced in the 5th centuries. There's at least 43 copies in our hands today of Greek parts of the New Testament, which showed us how ancient the Greek text is, that it was the language of the original New Testament, and that it was copied so many times by so many people who read that Greek and needed that. The early church fathers spoke Greek. Even the Apostles' Creed was written in Greek some 300 years before the Peshitta version ever came along. So it's clear the New Testament was written in Greek, not in Aramaic or Syriac. Now, what's the bottom line regarding this Aramaic, or rather Syriac, interlinear produced by the Winter Lational? Well, it's definitely a mix. On the one hand, if you want to study what the Peshitta or Syriac says, it's certainly a useful tool that way. But you won't find in it the original text of the New Testament. In a way, it's unneeded. Greek texts that are commonly in use by pastors and scholars already have the readings of the Peshitta version in them. And so on this slide you're looking at, above the line is the text of John 1.18, which says uh, the only begotten God. Below that line is what we call the apparatus. And below that line it lists similar wording in other texts or translations. And so you can see there it says S-Y-R, superscript P, standing for Syriac Peshitta. In other words, the Syriac Peshitta has that same word, only begotten God, in there. So anyone who reads the Greek New Testament, who wants to know the key readings of the Syriac, the Aramaic, or the Peshitta, it's already listed in them for them. They don't need another source to do that. But particularly, it's striking that this interlinear produced by the Way International consistently confirms the Christian teaching and the Greek texts about the nature of Christ Jesus, that he is, has a divine nature as well as a human nature. And the interlinear consistently contradicts founder V.P. Werewolf and the Way International on the important topic of Christ's divinity. Good day.